Welcome. I want to give you a warm welcome from the Board of Governors of Tyndale University, the Chancellor, Dr. John Wilkinson, the faculty, staff, and alumni of Tyndale University. Welcome to the virtual celebration ceremony of your graduation. We're glad that you could join us. This is a unique celebration in so many ways, but it reflects a number of firsts. For instance, this is the first class that will graduate under our new provincially legislated name of Tyndale University. This has been an exciting time as the province recognized the school in a new way. We've had seven different names over our 125 year history, and we will embrace this new identity with all of the passion and all of the intent that we did for all of the others. This is also the first graduating class that will celebrate a graduation virtually. This also is the first class of graduates that will actually have two graduation ceremonies. Today we're celebrating a virtual celebration and in the fall, hopefully in November, we hope that we can be live in a graduation in the Tyndale Chapel where we can celebrate with family and friends and we can see each other. But this is not the first time in our history that as a graduating class, we've had to face a situation in which society and the world is being shaped in new ways. <laughs> this is not our first pandemic. Over our 125 years, our students, staff, and faculty have faced two world wars, uh, incredible decades of social change, and even a global-wide health crisis. For example, the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 had a devastating effect around the world. It profoundly affected people in the city of Toronto. And I love how in the yearbook of 1918, they described our students, our alumni described how they responded to that time. Listen to what they said. They said the work of the college was interrupted to some extent during the epidemic of Spanish influenza. The evening classes were closed for three weeks. The day classes were not discontinued, but in any way, students who were in a position to give assistance in any way to the sick and the afflicted were released from attendance. A large number of the young women were able to render valuable help, and some of the young men as well. I love that line, some of the young men as well. We are thankful to record, they wrote, that during this epidemic, not one case of illness occurred within the campus. This has always been our mission as a Christian educational institution, to fling our graduates out into the world, to call them to engage, to see themselves as culture makers and salt and light, to become witnesses, winsome witnesses to the work of Christ in their lives. It's the kind of initiative that sends graduates from the classes into counseling and treatment centers, into law profession and business. It's the kind of thing that sends human people working in the human services and social work and even traditional church ministry roles. You can find our graduates in graduate schools and in places all around the world in almost 50 countries. In each of these places, their faith is a driver into excellence and entrepreneurship. You shouldn't be surprised. God has always been doing a new thing. He's always using people like you and I to make a difference in their workplaces and setting them wherever they may be. Even in the midst of this pandemic, and the questions that are arising from that, God has given us a word in Isaiah 43. Listen to what God has to say to us and to his people. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, 
For I am the Lord your God, since you are precious and honored in my sight, because I love you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. I am making a way. I am doing a new thing for the people I formed for myself, that they might proclaim my praise. None of you or I were prepared for this new world that is emerging out of this time of social isolation and pandemic. None of us were. But you have been equipped by being here at Tyndale University. You have been taught to think critically about your worlds and your professions, and not simply to critique the world, but to understand it and to add to that which makes it better and good. You have been formed in your character so that whatever you do, your faithfulness will allow you to have hope in the midst of what may seem hopeless. All of you graduates have been given the tools to dream that things can be better. And all of you, women and men, know that the full potential of your faith is to lead into the future whatever task you have been given. So welcome. Welcome to Tyndale University's undergraduate virtual celebration 2020. I hope that to see you in person in November but now let me give you to Dr. Barry Smith, Senior Vice President and Dean of the Undergraduate Studies here at Tyndale. Barry. Thank you, Gary. It is great to make a connection with you, even as we have over these last number of weeks found many different ways in which we engage, connect, and try to continue to be in, involved in others' lives. I wanna thank all of you that are graduating for what you have given to Tyndale over these years. For some, it's been a couple of years as you've transferred in from another school and I hope you've quickly realized what makes Tyndale special and you a part of it. For those of you that have been here for four or five years and have experienced so much by way of the changes and the way in which Tyndale has become such an important part of your life, I celebrate with you today. I congratulate you on this accomplishment and I look forward with anticipation and confidence in what you will provide and share and, and give by way of your vocation, by way of your calling, by way of your career and your future. And so again, while we can't be together in the way that we would like, I hope that soon, sometime perhaps this fall, depending upon uh, public health and all that's going on around us, that we will be able to convene and gather. But in the meantime, Share this day with your family and allow this to be one in which you celebrate that which you've accomplished and the, the confidence that you've gained from this achievement, which is significant, will prepare you well for what is next. And God knows and we celebrate all that that will be. So for this time and what we enjoy, while I won't get a chance to read your names, most of you being able to do it well and accurately, I look forward to the time when that can still be possible. But in the meantime, God bless, celebrate together, and may what this is today be something that is yet another milestone in your faith walk with him and your realization that he knows you, he loves you, he goes before you, and all of this is in his care and in his hands. So again, God bless, and may we continue into this time of worship, of celebration, and of remembering all that you have achieved in a way that brings honor to God and to you as well. Thank you, Dr. Smith. It's hard to figure out what to say in times like these. While we look outside to the situation of the world in this pandemic, we notice that there's a sense of bittersweetness in that we're celebrating these big milestones in our lives, like graduating from university in a much different fashion than we expected we would. And we have to say goodbye to our expectations of how this season would unfold. But I noticed that in the same sense, even if we had been sitting together in the chapel at the end of May to receive our diplomas in person, I think that sense of bittersweetness would still be there because that sense accompanies the circumstance we're in, which is one of new beginnings and endings. And as we release and let go and step away from the safe, comforting, cozy, warm environment of Tyndale, we also look forward to new beginnings 
new beginnings that are scary and uncertain. And those are things that we would be feeling even if everything was normal. This bittersweetness, this grieving of what is ending and this excitement and anticipation for what's beginning, this is a part of life, a part of the life stages that we're in right now. And that's something that we can celebrate and thank God for and walk through together. You see Tyndale, one of the most important things that we've been given in our undergraduate education at this institution is preparation, not only for the rest of our Christian walk and our relationships with others, but also for the real world where there are career advancements, corporations, interviews, important things like that, conversations with human resources. Now, unless you're pursuing further education or have some other plan for your life, I think that many of us will be trying to enter the workforce as soon as we can and to the best of our ability into jobs that pertain to our undergraduate education. And I think one of the greatest things that we've learned in our time at Tyndale is how to present ourselves in an intelligent and professional way. In this way, we show others the value of our education at a liberal arts institution, at a Christian institution, at Tyndale University. We can use these tools to show others what we've learned. Consider here the following likely scenario. Ah, uh, yes, Miss Hannah, please, yes, have a seat. Yes, hi, nice to meet you, yep. Well, I have your resume here in front of me, and I see that you do have a Bachelor of Arts, is that correct? Yes, I do have a degree from Tyndale. Oh my goodness, I see here that you have an undergraduate degree from a liberal arts institution. Pshaw, pshaw, I say, a liberal arts education. Don't you know that attempting career advancement with a liberal arts education, with a degree in philosophy, nonetheless, is like trying to purchase a Maserati with ancient Mesopotamian shekels? What value do you even have with this liberal arts education, I say? Ah, yes, yes, excellent point. Thank you for articulating that with such clarity. If I may take a moment to respond, however, I would love to exposit the underlying epistemological assumptions you convey with no doubt prima facie opinion, and I hope to do so with a cautious prolepsis. You see, a baccalaureate of the liberal arts variety acquaints one with the full expansive breadth of the trivium and the quadrivium alike, resulting in a nuanced mental, spiritual oikonomia whereby the life-giving ruach of the triune deity abides in the mental faculties of the persons in question. And I could continue, but I mustn't lest the soliloquy continue ad nauseum. You're hired. And this scenario is just one of many that will no doubt confront us as we leave this place and go into a brand new, brave new world. The education that we have worked so hard to attain and the wisdom we've been given from those who have taught us and poured into us at Tyndale, that'll take us far. Though my example beforehand was definitely facetious, I hope we can all take comfort in the fact that we have gotten to this place with the help of God and the help of our mentors, professors, and friends who have invested in us, invested in our education, our mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical health, and who have helped us to grow. We can be thankful for all of those things, and we can celebrate that as we look to what lies ahead in our futures. And with that, I am proud and excited to announce the Tyndale University Undergraduate Student Class of 2020.
My name is Steve Holmes, and I serve as the chair of the board here at Tyndale University. And on behalf of that board, it is my privilege to say congratulations. And thank you for choosing Tyndale. You know, it is a unique time. Normally, at this time, our graduation service is in the chapel, and we have sung some tremendous songs. And by the time I have gotten up to speak, all of you have received your, your, your graduation certificates and you have had the opportunity to, to say hello to Dr. Nelson and our chancellor, Dr. John Wilkinson, and, and, um, and some of your faculty. And today I am speaking to you individually. And it is different. And it's also different because one of the things that I love so much about graduation, I'm not getting to experience this year, and you aren't either. And that is the joy and celebration that comes with your family and your loved ones and, and, and the joy of, of hearing them celebrate when your name is announced. You know, often I sit and I, I spend a few moments and listen to the names and, and who have been the big, big people to celebrate in the midst of your being announced. And I say at the end of it, let's all celebrate the entire graduating class. We don't get to do that. And so I am saddened by that. But we have been blessed by your attendance at Tyndale, your commitment to creating a community, a community of people striving to learn, striving to be followers of Christ. You know, I've said many times, the pace of change is faster than the pace of learning. And change occurs so quickly these days that we haven't even got a chance to adopt to one change when another one occurs. You are graduating in the midst of change. You are graduating in the midst when we thought we were in, in an opportunity for real growth and enhancement and opportunity for many, many ways of developing your careers, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in whatever it might be. And yet that has changed. And so as our board speaks to you, we want you to know that we will be praying for you in this graduating time as you navigate what this journey to your future looks like. And may God bless you and watch over you and give you peace and be gracious unto you. On behalf of the board of Tyndale University, congratulations, enjoy the day. And I hope that in some not too far distant future, we can come together and truly celebrate the way it should have been. Have a great day. Thank you everyone for joining our celebration today. Celebration is a very important part of the Christian faith and finding ways to set down markers and rejoice together as community is an act of hope, whether we do it in person or virtually as we're doing today. It is my privilege to offer a prayer of dedication for you, Tyndale's graduates. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, all good things come from you. Celebration, hope for the journey ahead, the promise of your faithfulness and the gift of new life. All these things you have given freely in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as Jesus taught us to pray, we begin with worship and thanks for the kingdom of God. Thank you that our study, our work, our service at Tyndale is part of the kingdom of God that is coming and has come. Thank you that it is part of our story that you meet our daily needs. You were present, Lord Jesus, when assignments were due, when there were difficulties or misunderstandings. You have forgiven us for things we broke and got wrong. And you have brought many of us into places of new understanding and maturity as we worked for these degrees. We pray for these Tyndale graduates, Lord Jesus, that they will dedicate the next steps in their journey to you. You once prayed that the world would see your love and your glory through your followers. A degree, a qualification earned, are so much more than passports to effective careers although we do pray for effectiveness. We pray that every degree earned at Tyndale 
will be a blessing to our graduates and through them to the world. That teaching, service and scholarship will be woven together with faithfulness in each graduate story and in Tyndale's story as part of the big gospel story that brings hope to the world. We are meeting like this virtually because the world groans and hurts. Part of our love and service at this time lies in living within new limitations. I pray that the skills and knowledge that these graduates take with them from Tyndale will equip them for all that lies ahead in these days. Please give us all peace about the future, freedom from worry, a humble spirit to forgive, and a joyful hope. To close this prayer of dedication, I'm going to read words of blessing from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us, so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. We are looking forward to seeing graduates, guests and the faculty and staff at Tyndale at our graduation ceremony in November. Until then, stay safe and well and stay in touch.